This video will briefly introduce the debye huckel limiting law for the activity coefficients of electrolytes in dilute aqueous solution. Okay, so the uh, set of I, the aqueous components that we're going to have here, are the ions that result from a dissolved electrolyte. So the natural log of the activity coefficient of our electrolyte uh, ion which we discussed from the previous video on electrolyte activity is equal to negative a quantity called kappa times the charge of that electrolyte divided by 8 pi times epsilon naught the permittivity of free space times epsilon r which is called the dielectric constant of the solvent times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature so the, this also gives us an expression for the mean ionic activity coefficient. So the natural log of gamma plus minus is equal to negative absolute value of the charge of the cation times the charge of the anion times this quantity kappa again over 8 pi epsilon naught dielectric constant times Boltzmann constant times temperature. So the unit of this value kappa is inverse meters so 1 over kappa is what's called the Debye screening length, which is sort of a qualitative measure for effectively how what's the distance over which these ionic coulombic interactions uh, occur in solvent. Epsilon r is the dielectric constant of the solvent. That is a unitless quantity. The dielectric constants of solvents typically ranges from on the order of 1 to 100. So it's, it's closer to 1 for nonpolar solvents and larger for polar solvents. For example, for water at 20 degrees Celsius, 293 Kelvin, the dielectric constant is 80.1. A bigger, a bigger dielectric constant will attenuate out Coulombic interactions much faster. And the value kappa here, once we get this, uh, once we get whatever identity of the electrolyte that we're looking at, Kappa is equal to all of this to the square root of 2 times charge of the electron squared times Avogadro's number times 1,000 times what is called, if I have on there, yes, the ionic strength of the solution in moles per liter. We'll discuss that in a second. Divided by epsilon naught times the dielectric constant times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature. Okay, so that is the value of kappa. So the only thing we need to find now is what is this quantity called the ionic strength. So the ionic strength, IC, is equal to 1 half the sum over all of the ions in solution for this electrolyte of the integer ionic charge of that ion squared times its molarity. So for example, for sodium, that's a plus 1. Magnesium, calcium, etc., that's a plus 2. Any, it's just the integer of whatever the ionic charge is. And then concentration is the molarity of that ion in moles per liter. So we'll note here that kappa is proportional to the square root of the ionic strength. It's proportional to the square root of the molarity of each of these ions as because kappa has a square root on the outside of this IC there. So it's approximately proportional to the square root of, of the set of all of these uh, concentrations of these ions. So in the previous video, we discussed the osmotic coefficient of these ions, these electrolytes in solution. So typically what's done is that this osmotic coefficient is expanded as a series in powers of concentration to the 1 half. So it's reasonable to expand in terms of the square root of the concentration because this value kappa depends on the square root of the concentration, which depends, which determines the activity coefficient of our ions. So this Debye-Huckel limiting law is going to be exact at very low concentration for all ions. That's why it's called a limiting law because in the limit of very low concentrations, it's going to be accurate. And then at higher concentration of ions, these coulombic strong interactions start to take over, and we have to use more advanced models to get the activity coefficient of our ions in solution.